All right, folks, before we go fishing, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about where you get them itty bitty floats. Can't find them. They're non existent. Can't find them around here. Well, I'm going to show you how I make my own little floats. Um, I actually don't make them. Let me just show you. Well, folks, here it is. This is a Betts float. It is an inch and five sixteenths long. It's already a small float. Now, you can get these at Wally World or Walmart. Same place. And what I do... Now, I'll throw this float right here if I'm using four-pound test line. But if I'm using two-pound test line, this is what I do. I'll just take a knife. And right there where the paint line is, I go round and around and around. Following that paint line. Just around and around and around. And finally, it'll snap in two. That's it. Now I got two floats. The reason why I do this is because that crappie... With two pound test line, you can get a long cast out of this little float and small jig. And that crappie feels little resistance. And another thing that I'll do that's really important, or I think it is, these ends are square. See how they're square? Well, we're going to take care of that. This is just, this is just 80 grit sandpaper. For my sand it for my sander and all I do is right here where the the edges are this edge I'll just keep going around it and keep going around it like that until it's about this shape here the factory shape and then you wind up with a little bitty float the reason for that is because using them tiny jigs and having this little bitty float, that crappie feels little resistance. Too much resistance, too big of a float, and that crappie will spit that jig out, resulting in a missed fish. We don't like to miss them. Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Currently, well, it's about 40 degrees this morning. The high is going to reach 55. It's a little bit overcast this morning. 10% uh, chance of rain is what the weatherman said. I don't have a clue. But what we have right here is a 56 degree surface temperature right here. Now, this area that I'm fishing right now I focus on coves off the main lake the reason is the water temperature is a little bit warmer and usually they'll hold more fish especially this time of the year crappie are in their last stages of pre-spawn that's how I classify it they're moving up into these areas um, getting ready to move up in trees. A few fish are moving up in trees, but they're not spawning. But they're right on the verge of doing that. And here lately, I have been tearing fish up by using an ultralight two-pound test high-vis line. I prefer the high-vis. Um, it's vicious line with a little bitty float. I'm using a itsy bitsy float, little bitty one, and a little bitty jig. That's a 1.75 slab tail bait, um, 1.75. It's an inch and three quarter long, which that makes it a quarter inch short of two inches. Slender bait, and that is a, uh, what color is that? Pearl is the name of that. I'm using a 1 28th of an ounce jig head, little bitty light one. The reason is I can fish it a lot slower to entice these bites. Um, 
that's about all they are to it. I'm going to move it slow around these trees. And I may go on to a flat or two on the main lake if the wind don't get too bad and check a few more places out. I'm not sure. But let's just go ahead and break the ice. Now I'm going to start off about 20 inches deep right here. That's where the crappie have been. Anywhere from, oh, 18 to 20 inches deep. Let's make us a long cast. Now that's one reason why I like two pound test line. Well, one for fun. Second is I can make long cast with this little outfit right here. This light cork, this cork don't weigh anything. And the jig with a combination of both is just as light as a feather. So that two pound test line will allow me to punch that bait on out in there. Now I'm gonna start fish. I'm gonna fish slow. I'm a slow fisherman. I'm a patient fisherman. Bingo. Good one. My, my, my. Mm hmm. That's a sow cow. My goodness, let's net him. Now that's the kind of fish I'm talking about. Fish of that size right there. And bigger. Excite me. My goodness. Look at there, what a big black crappie, folks. That ain't your typical fart sniffer. Let's let him go. Go on back there. Golly, what a sow cow. Okay. There ain't nothing for me to do but catch another one. Now, I'm fishing over about four to five feet of water. These fish are suspended around this timber lay downs or blow downs whichever way you want to call them crappie love cover so they're, they're structure oriented fish no doubt just like a bass barely move it i'm not moving it but three four five inches at a time There he is. Golly. That's just too much for two pound line. This is a big crappie. This is a big one. Mm, mm, mm. Folks, when I first hooked that fish, I thought it was a bass. This water's warming up and these fish are really perking up. Let's let him go. That's a good one. That is a good fish right there. Go on back. They got a little bit slow on the pearl color, so I changed colors. That's one of the key things. That's just so important to do that, folks. When they get slow, I went to a shade different color that's a blue and it has blue metal fleck in it that's the 1.50 inch and a half long half inch short of two inches <laughs> same jig head same technique and bingo it worked change whoa look at the pretty blooms is it or is it not a blessing to be out here? Yeah, it is. No doubt. I've grown up eating taters. There he is. It's 
pretty well that simple when they're set up like this. They're the easiest to catch, folks. The only thing is I'm going to have to be... One has to be quiet in this shallow water. You have to take your time. Use your trolling motor just as less as you possibly can. Um, to catch these fish. See, I'm stepping real light. Barely using my trolling motor. Now, if it gets windy I'll definitely anchor in front of these trees but there's a pretty good black crappie okay to be quiet is very very important let, let me whoa I got a drillage and I got in a drillage and problem that hinders me out here. <laughs> All right, fella, go on. The only thing that's on my mind right now, and I don't have much of a mind to think of, or to think with, see what I'm talking about? But the only thing that concerns me at this time is to catch another. And there he is. Golly, there's a lot of fish right here in this tree. My goodness. Let me get away from them. Golly, that's a good fish. Another one. Mm. I enjoy this. This two pound test line is something I enjoy. You don't have any choice but to whoop them down. The water's getting warmer, and these fish are a lot more spunky. This is a little dive reel right here. It's a Revros, Revros LT-1000. They're not that expensive, folks. But now, about everything that I have now, or I'm going to, have is going to be dialed with reels. They're making them better than what they did in the 90s. That's a big one. Come on in here. That's a good one. That's a good one right there. That's the way, well, the way we say it here, good and G double O D U N, good and. And then I always like to go on it when i say on it that confirms that it's a fact <laughs> if that makes any sense let's let him go they are eating oh i got a mess does this ever happen y'all one two three four five let me check that. We're in good shape. Let's make another cast. All I'm doing is just reeling it back real slow. You'll see that bobber go thick. Then it'll sink out of sight slow. That's crappie. There he is. That one knocked the far out of it. I don't know. Yeah, Holly. I'm going to tell you why that crappie stripped that drag like that. It was about a 10 pounder right behind him. Bass. I seen him. That crappie ain't big enough to 
strip drag like that. Now he was scared. It's a good fish though. But now he had adrenaline in him is why he did that. Crappie ain't usually capable of stripping drag like that unless the fear is put in them. That was a big bass behind him. Ooh, that bass is lucky. I don't have something to catch him with right now, but let's let him go. That was a trophy. Let's let him go, folks. That was a little bit too much for that bass to try to eat, but he was trying to. Man, I just, mm, I'd love to got a hook into that fish. I'll come back and catch that fish, probably. Well, folks, that was certainly a lot of fun. In fact, it's a blessing, a big blessing, to be able to go out here and enjoy God's great outdoors. I want to say thank y'all for everything y'all do. All the great comments. Dog. And remember, go fishing when you can, fuck all this good.